Welcome to another edition of Improving Lives with SEI. Along with SEI President Rachel Gillette, I am Steve Nissim, the Chief Storyteller for SEI. SEI is committed to improving the quality of life in our community by building brains, building jobs, and building community. This program is all about showing how we do that. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and SCI was recently honored by a visit from a group of leaders from Lafayette, Louisiana. They came to learn about the work that SCI is doing so they can replicate it in their community. The leadership exchange trip helped bring home how SCI's efforts are truly becoming a model for other communities. You're going to see a lot of great things happening here in Pensacola. A delegation of over 60 people from the Lafayette, Louisiana area, known as Acadiana, visited Pensacola for a two-day leadership exchange. They see the community's progress as a model to emulate. We wanted to bring our, a number of our leaders here to Pensacola to see what is possible uh, when you have an engaged community, an engaged leadership, uh, people that are willing to put their money where their mouth is. How do you get that wealth off the sidelines? And Pensacola has done an outstanding job of that. The sold out trip organized by One Acadiana, a chamber of commerce meets economic development organization, fittingly started with a talk by Quinn Studer. His nonprofit, the Studer Community Institute, is dedicated to improving the quality of life in the Pensacola area. Our goal was to keep young talent home. Studer originally inspired the Acadiana Group last year with a presentation in Lafayette, and they have already begun adopting some of Pensacola's SCI-led initiatives. We're doing a Civicon series like you do here in Pensacola to raise the civic IQ of our community. We do a quality of life survey, exactly like you do here. So we're basically stealing all your great ideas. <laughs> as well as a panel discussion on the Civicon speaker series Acadiana had already adopted, SEI organized several other knowledge sharing sessions, including one on the extensive efforts to help small businesses and entrepreneurs, highlighted by the impactful Venture Mentoring Service. We've seen a lot of success stories through it, and it's been really, really rewarding. I think that's a great idea to kind of get going in our community. There is a little bit of a mentorship, but it's not that business incubator type mentorship. And I think that was a good key takeaway for me is to really work on trying to get that mentor program going. Another panel session focused on SCI's early brain development initiatives that aim to raise the level of kindergarten readiness. The research-based programs include a partnership with area hospitals to inform and empower parents on building their baby's brain from day one. We have some of our hospital leaders here with us on this trip, which uh, is fantastic. They're on board, they're engaged with these kind of ideas. Another great idea that we're stealing from Pensacola and very proud to do so. The visiting delegation included a diverse cross-section of Acadiana leaders, representing everything from government to foundations, banking to education. They left fully inspired to act. Hearing from all of the players here, it makes us think not so much about we have to do it exactly how they did, but it really opens up your eyes and your minds to what's possible. How can we take some of what you all have done here so well and get the right leaders in our community moving in the same direction? We were already exchanging texts and emails and ideas, putting together working groups to really implement some of the ideas that we've learned here. It's like a light goes on, and once that light goes on, you can't turn it off. To get involved and support the Studer Community Institute programs that have become a model for other areas, visit studeri.org. We found out we had a pent-up entrepreneur thing in our community. We were all obviously very impressed with the one Acadiana people. Now, Rachel, they came here to learn from us, but what did we learn from their visit? Yeah, it's interesting, Steve, because when you have a group coming from a different community and they're looking at us and learning from us, and it's inspiring for us too, because we're seeing through their eyes what's happening in our community in a different way. So sometimes you can get so caught up in just the actual doing of the thing and maybe seeing the obstacles and the hard work. Then you get a group like that who are an uh, unbelievable collaboration of people come over here, start seeing what's happening here and how we're implementing some real change in different areas of the community. Um, it just gives you a fresh look. It gives us a fresh look and um, increases our inspiration and our excitement about what we're doing here and seeing that it's working so much so that another community, and it's not just Lafayette that we're working with, we're working with other communities around the country too, and they're taking some of these programs that we've developed from scratch and then implementing it in their community too to 
kind of create the change that we're trying to create here. So Right, and what are you kidding? They had already had done the Civicon, they already started doing right. that. Now they're doing the brain bag program. So how can SEI benefit from seeing the way that they implement these programs? Yeah, I mean another interesting point is when you're doing it, Steve, you just kind of develop the program and then keep doing it the way that you've been doing it. Then you have a group like this, so collaborative with all of the different aspects from from banking to the independent foundation, the chamber, economic development, and they give you ideas. So it becomes more of a collaboration, a brainstorming, and we've actually made some changes even with the way that we're implementing our brain bag program. We're looking at the, how they do Civicon, and we're kind of doing a complete revamp of that too. So it's become a real sharing of ideas and knowledge and collaboration. And so it's benefiting us almost as much as it's benefiting them, which is wonderful. Yeah, a true exchange, really. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, of yeah. course, we've already accomplished a lot. SEI is making great strides in building brains. Our efforts in the early brain development keep moving us closer to the goal of Pensacola becoming America's first early learning city. The vision of making Pensacola America's first early learning city is getting clearer every day. Pensacola is becoming a place where every child is given the opportunity to be the best they can be. Every parent is given the knowledge and tools to build their baby's brain from day one. Student Community Institute programs impact families at every step in the first three years of life. Research shows 85% of a child's brain is developed in this pivotal stretch. The effort starts where life starts. SCI has partnered with all of the area's hospitals to provide difference-making information for every baby born in Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. This is a little gift from us to you guys. Um, it's from the Studer Community Institute. It's called the Brain Bag. All new parents get a brain bag filled with resources, a baby steps guide, Building Blocks magazine, two baby books, and a toy. It all provides tips and techniques to develop babies' brains. So sweet. Adding meaning and value to the community, the bags are assembled at Art Gateway, a nonprofit that provides services and opportunities for people with developmental disabilities. It's good funding, you may for a good cause. You know, we help out some, some new mothers to be, and uh, and then it keeps me busy and then make money on the side. I'm glad we got this. We need more. What's up? Along with the brain bag, parents are shown the Build a Brain video based on research done by the 30 million word center at the University of Chicago. Four and a half minutes that can be a life changer for parents. So many easy to grasp and utilize takeaways. Build that brain from the start. Even though your baby isn't able to talk yet, she hears you when you talk to her. So make sure you talk all the time. How you say it matters. Baby brains need to hear lots of words, but it's not just the number of words that matters, it's the way that you say them. Some people think responding to a baby every time he cries is spoiling him, but you can't spoil a baby. Learn that the more you respond to the cries rather than letting them cry, it could change the outcome of them as they get older. You can't spoil a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we learned. I think maybe for me is uh, that the learning starts even when they can't really talk back to you. Mm -hmm. We have older kids and this wasn't available back then so I think that would have helped us develop their brains better. This is our first child so I know it's, there's a lot of information out there. So it can be overwhelming so it's nice just to have like consolidated um, information that I know comes from like and it's endorsed by medical professionals. I just recently moved to this area about uh, seven months ago. Um, and I worked at a pretty big hospital up in Northern Virginia, um, had a really big postpartum unit, um, had a lot of resources, but I don't think we really had anything quite like this. Um, we would have like a postpartum video that we would show parents as they go home, but it didn't really talk about um, like child brain development afterwards. So I think it's really important. SCI's efforts continue after families leave the hospital. Parents are given the opportunity to sign up for the Basics Insights text messaging service. The free program developed at Harvard and brought to Pensacola by SCI sends twice a week texts giving science-based tips to enhance your baby's growing brain. The messages, tailored to the child's age, continue throughout the first three years of life. More and more parents are taking advantage, with nearly 3,000 signed up thus far. 
In an early learning city, the opportunities to learn and grow young brains are everywhere. This year, SCI facilitated the building of an early learning sensory garden at Gonzales Court. The nature-themed play space is designed to help foster a child's brain development. Made possible by the generosity of local philanthropist Sandy Sansing and the craftsmanship of Bear General Contractors is the community's third sensory garden, the second built at an area housing complex. The kids were on this playing before it was finished. That indicates there is a need. And so it means a lot. We can house people all day, but if we're not providing them with the necessities that they need in life to develop and to grow, then we have not, our mission has not been accomplished. And that's the partnership between us and the Student Community Institute. SCI's progress is impressing the person who inspired the drive to become America's first early learning city. You're gonna be an early learning city. You'll be the first early learning city. Dr. Dana Suskin of the University of Chicago returned to Pensacola in June to lend more guidance. The renowned pediatric surgeon, social scientist and best-selling author produced groundbreaking research that is the basis for SCI's programs. Just seeing how the group has connected through hospitals, employers, you know, Wahoo Stadium, and really tried to bring it into the fabric of this community, I think is really what gives it so much legs, and I'm excited to see what happens in the next, you know, three to five years. Those next steps will be critical in fulfilling the vision. Informative early brain development stickers in businesses, along with billboards, especially within pockets of poverty, are on the agenda. All the while stepping up the efforts in hospitals, at home, in playgrounds, everywhere. Help us complete the mission to make Pensacola America's first early learning city and give every child the opportunity to be the best they can be. Obviously, so much has been done, so much progress. So what's most encouraging to you about the progress that's been done so far to make this America's first early learning city? When you see a video like that, Steve, and it kind of encompasses everything that has been done so far, um, it's so encouraging because we got started in the hospitals. That's where we knew we could reach most parents. But it can't stop there. And so what we've been able to do is develop these partnerships. You saw a couple in the video. And that's what's key. That's what's exciting. We need to, as Dana said in that video, bring the learning into the environment. Everywhere a child is going to be, we need to have learning opportunities there. And so when an employer um, comes to us and says they want decals, that's so wonderful. If we can get it into the pedi pediatrician's offices, that's vital. It takes the follow-up, working in the schools to do the sibling brain builder program. So now we're getting the siblings involved too. It's really encouraging. It's about getting that learning from day one in the hospital and then all the way out into in the environment. That's what's really going to make us America's first early learning city. And we're, we're on the way, but we need help from everybody who's watching this show, whether they're an individual or an organization, employer. Um, we need them to get in touch with us so that we can partner with them, help them get resources, and just keep this implementation of getting learning every single place that we look in our community. Absolutely. All right, a lot more to come on this edition of Improving Lives with SCI. We delve deeper into building jobs and building community coming up. That's why it's important. Building brains, building jobs, building community. That's what Studer Community Institute is all about. Our early brain development initiatives aim to give every child the opportunity to be the best they can be and create America's first early learning city. SCI is also fully immersed in helping the area's businesses, leaders, and entrepreneurs. The Spring Entrepreneur Hub provides difference-making support, highlighted by the Venture Mentoring Service. A plethora of live and on-demand training deliver many opportunities for business leaders to learn and grow. The effort to build community centers around Civicon, with an invaluable free speaker series that brings in nationally renowned experts to share best practices aimed at raising the area's civic IQ. Building brains, building jobs, building community. That's what Studer Community Institute strives to do every day. Every word is building his brain. 
Civicon is all about building community. Their speaker series brings in experts from across the country to share best practices and in turn raise the area's civic IQ. In December, the Civicon Awards honored those that are acting on the lessons learned, and that includes Pensacola's new top decision maker. This is such a huge part of my life, and I know I wouldn't be in this position without Civicon. D.C. Reeves, Pensacola's new mayor, knows as well as anyone how impactful Civicon is. As a Student Community Institute employee, he was on the ground floor of the effort to raise the area's civic IQ. I did all of that planning and, and all of that organization and all of that effort, you know, never thinking that, you know, the people we were trying to speak to one day would eventually be me. Fittingly, Reeves took home the marquee honor at the second annual Civicon Awards. The event aims to recognize those fulfilling Civicon's mission to make our community a better place to live, work, play, and invest through civic engagement. Over the past five years, the speaker series has brought in 60 national experts to share best practices on a myriad of topics. The lessons will greatly inform Reeves' agenda as mayor. We build a sense of place and make it more bikeable and walkable. Concepts we'll use in parking. Uh, I mean, I could. Uh, go on and on about just different things that when you hear from the best in the United States, you listen. I'm just so fortunate and grateful to be now in a position to take all of that knowledge and really take best practices from around the country and start putting them in place in Pensacola. 19 awards were handed out in 11 different categories. In one of the strongest direct correlations, the Mount Lily Studios project team, behind an effort to build affordable housing, won the Strong Towns Award. The honor is named after the organization of nationally renowned land use planner and civic engineer Chuck Marone, a three-time Civicon presenter. Chuck Marone preaching the gospel of, you know, sort of infill developments and, and making use of the infrastructure that we already have, you know, that's kind of a fundamental element of, of our project. I would say he's probably, you know, one of the biggest inspirations. With awards covering everything from environment to government transparency, placemaking to equity, a wide range of difference makers were honored. The recognition and the sentiments behind it were clearly meaningful. I was very encouraged tonight to see all those people and then also to think, yeah, these are people who care about the community because there's a lot of negativity out there. And this was not a negative event. This was such uplifting, you know, it was very energizing. I think it's just another way to build momentum. Let's rally around each other as people who really take the lead in our community in, in all different aspects and make it better. We want to keep harnessing that. We want to foster that and grow that uh, to make Pensacola the place we know it can be. To learn more and get involved, visit studeri.org slash civicon and pnj.com slash civicon. Rachel, you uh, worked for DC, uh, worked with DC for many years. You were on his transition team. So, uh, how encouraging is it that he's taking so many lessons from Civicon into his role as mayor? Well, he, when he put together that transition team, he gave various focus areas out, and that all came from Civicon. So the group looked at the different aspects that we'd learned from Civicon, went out into the community to see what we needed to do here based off the recommendations. And a big thing was no strategic plan existed for the city. So I think that's the biggest thing that DC is going to focus on. There were recommendations about what should be in a strategic plan. Again, all of that pulled from Civicon. So extremely encouraging. And we're really excited to see what DC is going to do with all that. Yeah, them. absolutely. All right, SEI is building jobs in many ways. Live training for business leaders is high on that list. And our marquee event is Entrecon, the hugely successful world-class business leadership and entrepreneurship conference provides a tremendous resource for the area. The best way to understand what it's all about is a first-hand look at the Entrecon experience. Arriving for Entrecon, Studer Community Institute's two-day business and leadership conference in downtown Pensacola Abraham Scully and Penny Cornaja immediately felt the vibe. Super vibrant, energetic. I think just everyone coming together in, in similar roles in terms of wanting to make a, an impact in our communities and are passionate about doing that. We could definitely feel that energy. There's so much energy. Like everyone's so happy and positive and we're all gonna take all of these experiences about leadership and take them back to the office. The promise quickly turned to payout as they settled in for the first world-class keynote speaker, Rohan Freeman. The award-winning entrepreneur based in Connecticut is also an accomplished mountaineer who has climbed the world's seven summits. He blended both passions into an inspiring presentation. Get a Sherpa. 
because you're going to find yourself at places like this. Not just on the mountain, but in your business. And what do you do then? You want to tackle this by yourself if you have never done it? Or do you want to get somebody to help you along? He used the analogy about having a Sherpa. And myself being an entrepreneur, a go-getter, someone who wants to get it done and wants to get it done right, sometimes I fall into the trap of I can do it all versus identifying who can I bring onto my team to fill in those holes and can be strong where I'm not as strong. So that was really encouraging for me. My favorite was um, building your rope team, which I really thought was cool because you can't do it alone. You need help and you need a team that can support you. That was huge for me. The second keynote from Jennifer McCollum on making the most of your leadership also proved impactful. Oftentimes, people don't know their own superpowers or strengths until it's reflected back to them by someone who sees it. And when we do that, how do they feel about being part of our organization? Next up, a short stroll to Bodacious Shops for a lunch and learn session on having critical conversations. It's okay to be honest, right? We're not, it's, it's best to be honest. Scully and Cornaja then headed in different directions for breakout tracks. For Scully, attending with his wife Fanny, the entrepreneur-focused path, a natural choice. Two years ago, he started Speaks to Inspire, a mental health programming and consulting agency. Over the two days, the entrepreneur track offered valuable sessions on negotiation skills, using curiosity to fuel creativity, and a fresh mindset about scaling. That talk by Pensacola Collab's Patrick Rooney included a pivotal message to think about scaling very early on. With the approach, oftentimes it's let's get some success first and then we think about scaling. So just shifting the perspective on, OK, how can I think about scaling in terms of pricing and how I'm delivering this service or product even before getting with launching? So that was very impactful for me. Cornaja gravitated towards the leadership breakout track. She's a property manager for Catalyst Healthcare Real Estate. She attended sessions on quiet quitting, accountability, women in the workplace, and a presentation by Julie Birch, a leadership coach from Texas, on becoming a change leader. So the first thing I said to you was to change three things about yourself. Did you hear the tone of the room? Y'all went, oh. My favorite part about what she said was the uh. Like getting past the uh phase is when the magic happens. And it's so true, like, I never thought about it like that until she said it. We're constantly creating new SOPs and things are changing constantly at Catalyst. Super helpful to like, to not get in your head about change and to let, let yourself grow. Day one's final keynote speaker, Tim Kinsella, transfixed everyone. The former commanding officer at NAS Pensacola Kinsella focused on self-awareness as a path to success at work and life. A wonderful blend of humor and inspiration delivered a tremendous impact. Leadership isn't just from the top down. Leadership goes up and down and all around. Leadership is from everybody. Leading with love is one of the huge things I took away from Captain Tim. Caring about the folks you're around and everyone matters in your team and Leading comes from all directions, not just up. You cannot be a good leader if you don't look after yourself. You cannot. It's impossible. It doesn't work. It really stood out for me to hear um, Captain talk about the importance of taking care of yourself because if you're not well, it's going to affect every other area that you try to um, be effective in. Entrecon kept delivering on day two, starting with a keynote by Kristen Hadid. A super dynamic thought leader, CEO, and author, Hadid shared a lot of outside-the-box ideas to change the world through human leadership. When we stopped focusing on retention and we started focusing on helping people build as much identity capital as possible, what do you think happened? People didn't want to leave. Yet another game-changing keynote followed with Blaine Harding. The widely respected former director of diversity engagement at Virginia Tech used his unique blend of academia and personality to deliver a thought-provoking presentation and follow-up lunch and learn on creating inclusive workplaces. If you're going to treat people equally, that means you're going to treat them differently according to what they need in order to succeed. I think my last slide is the most important one. 
give grace? The biggest surprise was grace. Giving people grace and understanding that we're human and we might not, we might not know. And teaching and helping them learn. It's super helpful. One thing that stood out for me in his session was he said, your worldview is not the only worldview. And I think oftentimes I can see only what I can see, but I also have blind spots. So being able to connect with other people who think differently, who process differently, who have different visions, goals, and dreams, it helps me to then see a broader worldview that can help to impact change. On top of all the difference making knowledge, another huge benefit of the EntreCon experience is next level networking. I know the name of these folks or like the companies, but I've never gotten a chance to actually commiserate with them. So that was super valuable. The connections that were made with other entrepreneurs who are young like myself and are passionate and are creating businesses and thinking about scaling and having those types of conversations just to hear other perspectives and be around communities of individuals who are similar to me, um, have goals for themselves. I think would be very powerful just to nurture these relationships that I, I made throughout the conference. EntreCon concluded on another high note with the final keynote by internationally regarded healthy workforce expert Renee Thompson. Her presentation provided pivotal mental and physical strategies to go from exhausted to extraordinary. If you really paid attention to the entire last two days, a lot of this was really about making sure that you're okay first because you can't be the leader that you need to be if you're so focused on everyone else. Two days chock full of learning, growth, inspiration, and connection all added up to an EntreCon experience to treasure. This almost sets me up for a leadership trajectory in a sense. I'm already a property manager, but I don't manage anybody. So, I, this is like a window here, a window of opportunity for me now to have sort of these tools under my belt to take it to the next level. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Thankful to Studer Community Institute for creating this space, number one. Oftentimes I'm looking at conferences, different things to do, and, and I do have to travel, but being able to be home and connect with people from all across the country and then also those who are local. The space was definitely a safe one and an opportunity to build meaningful connections that will go beyond EntreCon this year. Is it awkward for you at all? Um, Camera following you around? <laughs> you can learn more about EntreCon at EntreConPensacola.com. And to get involved in everything Studer Community Institute provides for business leaders and entrepreneurs, visit studeri.org. Of course, we want to thank Abraham and Penny for allowing us to follow them around. And uh, Rachel, okay, EntreCon is your baby. So what's your takeaway from watching the experience uh, of these two attendees? Um, really, bringing people together to learn is just a game changer. Seeing them in that environment, and all of them talked about the energy that was there. And so when you're together in that space, which, which Abraham described as safe, it was a good place to learn. And what was impressive is that they were able to take the teachings, the tactics, um, the advice from those speakers and translate it into their workplace, their journey in leadership, and learn those lessons. And so that's just such, such an exciting thing. And there was such a variety of topics there. People were able to find what meant something to them and so whether it was business entrepreneurship leadership really the humanness in the workplace um, they were all able to get something out of it and the, the energy and the connection was was just fantastic and we get to do it all over again of course the ninth entrecon coming up in november, november. leading up to that we have the new entrecon extra series so what's the thought behind that that's right i mean that brand is so strong people enjoy it so much we want to keep that going throughout the year for people so um, we've got one coming up in March. Um, we'll have some more throughout the year and really just keeping that learning going so people can benefit in the community from it and uh, really forward our mission. All right, learning all year long. All year long. King. All right, Rachel, thanks so much thank for you. Uh, everything you do and thanks for joining us here. You too, Steve, thank you. All right, that does it for this edition of Improving Lives with SCI. If you want to get involved in making our community a better place to live, visit our website at studeri.org. Everyone can be a part of building brains building jobs and building community. Thanks for watching.